Thanks very much, Chris. Well, one team is decided for the final tomorrow. Who will they play, the Netherlands or Australia? Ireland wait to find out who will be victorious in this second semi-final here at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. It's another beautiful day in London. There's a slight breeze which will cool things down on the pitch. And certainly a picture of concentration, the captain of the Netherlands, Carleen Dirks van den Herbel. She said that the Dutch will focus on their own game. They don't worry about the opposition. Well, can Australia make them worry today? That is the question everybody's asking. They've yet to be really tested in this tournament. But today, will this be their first true test? And the Australian players running through the flag that's blowing in the wind. Lining up along the centre line before we have the national anthems. And the first national anthem will be the national anthem of the Netherlands. Plenty of applause for the world number one side, the Netherlands, as we turn our attention to the national anthem of Australia. Big smile on the face of Rachel Lynch. That smile will soon become a look of concentration. Good support for Australia around the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre, as there has been throughout this tournament. The question is, will they be able to make enough noise to cheer their team home? Turn our attention now to the team lineup. So starting in goal will be Anne Wienendahl, they have been rotating their keepers. In defence, they haven't really been tested yet. Lauren Stam and Arin van den Assem is playing a 50th game alongside Kaya van Marsaka. This is where I believe the game will be won or lost. Zandervaard, uh, Kurt, Carleen Kurt, Dirks van den Herbel, and van Keffen and de Gerda in the midfield for the Netherlands. And that's going to be the real test. Kitty van Maal has been on fire up front. So too has Luring and Jonker. Goals have not been a problem for the Netherlands. 28 in their four games so far, and they've only conceded two. Turn our attention to Australia. Now, Rachel Lynch, she's been having a great tournament as well, and she's going to be really tested today. In front of her are Jodie Kenny, Kerry McMahon, Edwina Bowen, and Georgina Morgan have been rock solid 
But again, it's the line in front of them that is going to have to work hard today. Renee Taylor has been outstanding, in my opinion. Steph Kershaw and Brooke Perris are the ones who try to be the link from the midfield to the attack. Rosie Malone in her first tournament has had a good one as we have Renee Taylor's name popped up again, but Emily Smith is also up front. So there are the substitutes at the moment. A lot of people were surprised to see Jodie Kenny out there. You can see heavily strapped shoulder. She was absolutely cleaned out by Belensucci in the shootout and many thought she wouldn't be playing this game she's had her arm in a sling the last two days but she's out there the netherlands push back and get us underway these two teams have been in some monumental battles over the years as Dirk van den Herbel makes a way forward gets the free hit kenny involved straight away to the right hand side i'm ashley morrison looking forward to bringing you all the action in this game alongside me and she has been all tournament mel clulo the former england and great britain player yeah good to be here actually i have to say i'm really looking forward to the semi-final i think the first one was was exceptional for a number of reasons of the tactics and things but here i think you've got two teams whose basic skill level is is high you've got a dutch team that's in absolutely fine form and has ripped this tournament to pieces and you know, yes, they played England the other evening, but I still don't really think that was a stern test for them. I think in this Australia team, potentially it's their hardest game yet. Absolutely, it's going to be a real test. And just to give you an idea of the comparison of the two teams, the Netherlands have had 100 shots in their four games, Australia just 39. There is a big difference in terms of attacking prowess. The big question will be whether Australia can get the ball forward. Slattery has it now. She can turn a game in a second. Hurts bursting down in practice. Kershaw. Picked up by Renee Taylor. She gets the foul. Kershaw looks to play on quickly. Ball to the top of the D. Malone trying to turn. Looking to feed it into Paris. And a penalty corner for Australia. That's the great start for them. The big question now is whether Jody Kenny can actually drag the shoulder injury there are doubts but the last few that um, Jodie Kenny's taken she's actually opted to take the ball off the top and hit it herself but we know Australia have got other options as well as we see this little um, ramp up onto the Dutch leg got Georgia Morgan up there we know that she can flick a ball as well so it's not always just going to be about Jodie Kenny so Maddie Fitzpatrick is another option if they chose to use her is Morgan at the second battery, Kenny at the first. I'm sure they will go. And they've gone to Jody Kenny. She hits from the top. It's, oh, it looked as if it went under the crossbar and in. Did that go over the line? That is the question. Or did it bounce out? So it's Kenny hitting Venan Dahl's foot onto the crossbar and out. It wasn't a wasn't the best of clearances from Bean and Dahl, you have to say, but it's hit the underside of the bar and come back out. So it wasn't as close to the goal line as we thought. No, it wasn't as it comes out again. Second penalty corner swept into the first runner. Looking to be hit by Morgan. She continues through. They've won another penalty corner. Just the start you wanted in a game like this. Australia to come out and put the Dutch under pressure. Kenny goes for the flick. Good running initially by Margot van Geffen. Now, will it be third time lucky for the Australians? Slattery on the baseline. Morgan still at the second battery, Kenny at the first. They go to Kenny again. She sweeps, comes off the first runner again. She's off the stick, so it'll be an Australian ball from the side. They did look quizzically at the umpire. Nothing being given, though. That's for this game. Marina De La Fuente from Argentina and Sarah Wilson of Scotland. And the church is our video umpire. A slatter again picks up for Australia. Lovely little bit of play by her, almost into the edge of the circle, but the pass back, just catching her foot. If Stephanie Kershaw just got in the way of Slattery where she was coming across the circle. There's Paul Godoyne, the coach of the Australian women. He's with the men's programme for seven years before switching over. It's been a lively start by Australia. 
as they give possession away. Zandavard is leaving it behind and laid back. De Herder pushes it out wide now. Margot van Heffen helps it forward. Good movement as always from the Netherlands. And it will be a long corner. So now it's the Netherlands' chance to put pressure on Australia's defence. Comes back to Van Marseke. Almost intercepted by Hertz. Laid down the line, good ball, luring with a good run. And off the Australian player again, it'll be another long corner. And wide is Aaron van der Nassen. As I said, playing her 50th game. 2014, she wasn't in the Netherlands squad, and she was working as a photographer as part of her media degree. And she said it got a little bit hard to be taking photos of the team in the tournament. And that was lifted and into the jaw of Emily Hertz. Okay. Well, look at that. Even a boxer wouldn't be up that quickly. <laughs> that Marsaka, I think, understood she clearly made the error and was the first one to get over to Emily Hertz, make sure she's okay. Ava de Hoda as well, which is always nice to see you in the pressure cooker of a semi-final that your opponent's also concerned about your injury status. Well, she had a mouth guard in, certainly. Comes to Dirks van den Hervel. Lovely pass to de Hoda. It's just intercepted by Caitlin Nobbs. Nobbs plays it into the foot of Kelly Yonker. Alone again, really lively as Paris picks up. She's had an, again an outstanding tournament, in my opinion, for Australia. Brooke Paris really stepped up with Claxton and Nance missing and has really taken on the responsibility. Stronger again, time pressure, forced back is Colin. You can just tell, Mel, the crowd are very, very quiet. They're on the edge of their seats with this one. Yeah, definitely waiting for, for something to happen. Um, you know, I think we're so used to seeing a free-flowing Dutch team in this in this competition. I think Australia have, have been there or thereabouts. I don't think they've necessarily been at their best, but have come out and put the Dutch under pressure, which we haven't seen too much of so far. There's not too many flies here. They need those corks around their hat, but anyway. Well left by De Herder, picked up by Lidewey Velten. Velten now looking to turn and run at Nobbs, feeds it infield to Dirks van den Herbel. She lifts it into the feet of Jody Kenny. Kenny's thinking about referring, and then I think she's decided not to. This link-up play between Velten and Dirks van den Herbel has been outstanding, not just in this tournament, but for years to come. And they're, they're almost just, they're on the same wavelength. They know where each other's going to be. Velton sets up the Australian defender and then just dunks it under the under the arm to her mate and puts it on the foot for the Dutch first penalty corner of the game. It is indeed. So, 6 from 20 for the Netherlands in the tournament. And about a 25% conversion rate, just over. And Marseka at the second battery, and Anessem at the first. It goes to Marseka, low down, Lynch saves. Up in the air it goes, played down by the injector, which was Alice Capers. And Lynch already keeping the Netherlands at bay. There's good reactions here as well from Van Hovel just there to get a stick on it, to put it up in the air for Catels. And it goes again to Lidewey Velten. One possession here and set up a brilliant goal the other day. Across the D it goes, lost almost. In the end, Renee Taylor came out with it. She loses out to De Herder. Inside the D it goes, and again, a good tackle from Renee Taylor. And Renee Taylor, just 21 years of age, showing a maturity that belies those years. Good intercept by McMahon. Hurts looking to turn, but it's steal from Van Marseke. Dirks van den Hervel. Looking for options, tries to just dink it down the line to Lidewey Velten. 
Jesse Bates was put under immense pressure. Over the side it goes. Just this spell by the Netherlands keeping possession. And that's what they like, the more time on the ball. So Kershaw. The third again in the ball. She goes off for an interchange and it's played down the line by Colin. Netherlands still on the door of the Australian goal. What was interesting the other evening is um, Colleen Dirks van Hovel came into the studio after the game when they'd beaten England. And she said they were glad that they'd played it an English side because they knew that they would defend well, they knew that they would defend as a team and make it really difficult for them. So they almost use that as a, as a stepping stone into this semi-final. They're expecting something exactly the same from Australia. And she was saying to me that she felt that Australia's defence was going to be hard to break down. They were less worried about their attacking prowess in this tournament. Slattery picks up the ball. Good tackle coming in from Colin. Kershaw. It's past two. Does well and then is fouled. And that very well is it going to be? No, I thought it might have been a card to Marlis Cattles. So Bates now. Some passes. Comes back to Caitlin Nobbs. Georgina Morgan. Looking for Slattery. Slattery came back, put a bit of pressure on, but it'll be a free hit to the Netherlands. I know Australian fans will be urging their team on, but if you go to the stats, their last win in a major tournament against the Netherlands was 2009 Champions Trophy. They've been played 14 games, and there's been one draw in those last 14 matches, and that was in the Investec Cup in... 2013. So the have really been dominant against Australia. I think they've been dominant against everyone in the world, to be honest. I was going to say, I think there's been a dominance. There's Alison Allen, sorry, the coach of the Netherlands, former Australian player. I think since Allen left the Australian squad at, you know, early 2000s, I think the Dutch have been on the rise. Australians have, you know, gone through some difficult spells in some major tournaments, but certainly look as though they've got the beginnings of a decent squad and a decent team here. But yeah, the Dutch have been world class for years and years and years. Alison Allen did move from Australia after the Sydney Olympics to Little Switzerland in the Netherlands, where she started her coaching career there. Two times FIH Player of the Year. Also won two World Cups herself. There. Unfortunately, retired retired from the game far too too early. I'm not going to say I wasn't disappointed to see the back of her because I had <laughs> the great pleasure of playing against her many times. Good steal there from Phoenix. Infield it goes. Lidovai Belton looking to weave her magic around the edge of the circle, but Australia come up with the ball and break forward. Just top that pass, Edwina Bone. So it's back with the Netherlands. Velton plays it infield. For once, there's nobody there when she made that pass. And it was funny because I was talking to Kenny Dirks van den Hervel and I said, does Alison Anna really sort of want you to get up for this game against Australia, put one over her former team? She goes, no, nah, she never talks about it. She goes, she's a duchy now anyway. And here come the Netherlands again. Good break down the midfield. Vard, who's another one who's had a really good tournament, though dispossessed, a strong tackle coming in by Savannah Fitzpatrick. She was here as a replacement player, probably thought she wasn't going to have any involvement in the tournament, and then Lindy Comerford injured her hamstring, and so Savannah Fitzpatrick allowed to come in because the tournament's endurance is over 10 days. Lizzie Malo does well to pull away from two Netherlands players. Patrick trying to play it down the line, Miss Slattery and it'll just dribble out of play. Catching the final three minutes of the first quarter, no real guilt-edged opportunities to either side as yet, apart from the penalty corner opportunities. It's Patrick against Savannah, that is, and it's Kershaw. 
Kershaw loves to run with the ball on the end of a stick, just doubles back, lays it to the top of the D. Slattery was at full stretch, maybe should have probably waited and let that one run. But I don't think there was a shout from Savannah Fitzpatrick. No, and I think a, a striker of Catherine Slattery's nature is not going to always, well, as the ball's coming in, she's always going to be looking for to make the trap herself. He'd half expected to make it in that situation. She's got a brilliant first touch. As indeed, it's surprising she hasn't scored a goal as yet in the tournament. Go, go. It's a lovely turn from Renee Taylor. Looking to play it out wide now to Savannah Fitzpatrick. Another short pass. Slattery takes a tumble. Was there a push? Not according to the umpire. One back by Jody Kenny. But then Yonker picks up the loose ball. She'll now turn, coming back is Perez, trying to close Yonker down on the reverse. Looks to play the diagonal ball, had to be cut out at the back. Perez now, a little bit of space. Goes past Van Heffen. Well, that sounded like a stick check from Dirks van den Herbel from where we are, but no whistle. And again, Yonker combines well with Margot van Heffen. You feel either side has had control in this first quarter? Um, not really. I think, yeah, Australia certainly in the first five minutes seemed to to dominate and had those three penalty corners. But I think it's been, I don't know, a little bit surprised. I think at, the, at some of the quality, or you know, the, the, I guess we're used to free-flowing hockey from Holland, which Australia are never going to let them do. Lovely ball into the circle from Dirks van den Hervel and Van Heffen got caught up with Jody Kenny. And the decision went Kenny's way. It's a fantastic tackle. Nice and low. Van Geffen does the right thing, tries to chuck the ball down Jody Kenny's left foot. Great trap. There's a deep quarter hand, which of course is part of the stick. No problems there inside the circle. And Anna, far from happy on the side. I think she felt that should have been a penalty corner, or maybe she's just not happy with the way her team are playing, as Mel Clulo alluded to. Not quite as free flying as we're used to seeing from them. I certainly, now in the in the group stages, they they set themselves a goal of they wanted to score a goal in every quarter. Um, whether that changes now that you, I don't think it would. But now that you're in the quarterfinals, semi-finals, I think that's the instinct that she expects from the team. for the end of the first quarter. Stone to Poland. He's poked over the side by Kershaw. Played forward, intercepted well by Morgan. Kershaw again with a little burst, but I'm not sure it'll come to much as the whistle is about to go for the end of the first quarter, and there is the hooter. Jody Kenny, she's really the one who had the best opportunity on the penalty corners, but at the moment, unable to beat the Dutch goalkeeper. So after the first 15 minutes, it is honours even. Netherlands nil, Australia nil. Everybody gathering round Alison Annan and Paul Godoy. We take a look at the highlights and Jody Kenny, a first penalty corner, deflected up off the keeper's pads, hit the underside of the crossbar and came back out. I think Emily Good. Smith does really well on that corner to run across uh, Wienendahl's eye, eye line. And this was the Dutch penalty corner, Kai van Marsecker's shot, saved well by Rachel Lynch, but this was brilliant improvisation to keep it alive inside the circle. And we're going to go pitch side now to Krista Cullen. And I'm with Paul, the head coach of the Australia team. It's been a quite a fair initially, but you had three corners up, up front. It was a good start by us. Yeah, pleased with the start. I think, you know, we've, we've had some opportunities. We've sort of starved them from a fair bit. So, yeah, looking good. And then your press and disrupting the Dutch. Is that what it's going to be about today? To be able to stop them getting a flow? 
It's a part of it. We've still got to be better with the ball. We want to keep it in our front half a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, we're really happy with how we're going, but it's it's only one quarter. Perfect. Thanks. Krista Cullen with Paul Godoy there. I think there's quite a lot of components to win in this game. And it's going to be interesting the way it plays out. Catherine Slattery will work really hard. Always does. Doesn't know any other way. The Netherlands get the second quarter underway. Comes out wide to Phoenix. Has to go back. Emily Smith and Rosie Malone immediately trying to put on pressure. First time pass. Picked up well by Perez to Smith. And then into the foot she goes of Aren and Danessa. Smith now penalised for going within that imaginary five metres. Again, I agree with it. It is within the five metres, but she's not putting the player under any pressure. So let her take the ball, make sure, you know, give that player the opportunity to, to pass it and then carry on with the game rather than whistle it. I get it, rules are rules, but... It's a rule I don't like. I think it should only ever be blown if it's dangerous, but hey, I'm not a rule maker. Bit of Ivelton on the ball now. Looking to go past Edwina Bone. The sticks got caught. Almost looked as if Edwina Bone was actually holding a stick, but I don't think she was. Comes back to Velton now. Gets it from outside the circle. Good defence again from Carrie McMahon. Paris forced into the corner. As well with knobs and then help forward again. Eddie Bone. Slattery just lost it through. Dutch player running across her line of vision. I'm expecting to see the Netherlands just be that little bit more patient in this quarter. As it's a good pass to the top of the circle, rolls in along the baseline, looks to lay it back. That was good from Lauren Laurie. Again, happy to come back to create the space, then lifted high. Is that a happy coach? Not judging by the deep side, I know. But I think, you know, you know Australia are starving Holland of space. Um, I think, you know, they've got their defence spot on. That's great tack. Well, I thought it was good tackling back, right? Stephanie Kershaw played on quickly by the Netherlands into the circle, reverse stick shot. And it's come off the back stick though. So Matler penalised for that. Yeah, didn't get didn't get the hands low enough. So hit the top of the stick with the back of the hit the ball with the back of the stick. That was good umpiring picked up by Sarah Wilson. Federica Matler, who again is just 21 years of age, and this is her 44th appearance. She's got 26 goals to her name already, though, which is incredible. They just continue to uncover the superstars, don't they? Yeah, indeed, I saw her out with her family yesterday on the day off, just enjoying the sunshine. Stolen by Zandavard. Zandavard trying to get past, but didn't manage to get past Maddie Fitzpatrick. As she carries forward. It's taken away from her by Eva de Gerde. Comes out wide now. Van der Nassen looking as the ball was coming to us, scanning what was available. Played forward again by Phoenix. Australia, though, this minute that ball's played, they just closed down. The attacking players from the Netherlands. And just too much pace on that, but another good lead from Zandavard. She's also, you know, she had a bright tournament, Zandavard. From that midfield position, pushing through. Link up play has been exceptional. It is indeed. I mean, Lydia Velton gets a lot of the headlines because of just the wonderful skill she has as she breaks forward, but Zandavard works equally as hard. and a Penalty corner won by her. 
So the Netherlands get their second penalty corner of the match. Belton runs in, plays the ball here, to, and the first touch, you knew exactly where Jody Kenny was and Brooke Perris were. First touch puts the ball up into the air. Nightmare for defenders to then try and take the ball off the stick without a foul. Can the Netherlands open the scoring here? And Marseka has moved to the first battery. And an Asim at the second. They go to Van Marseka. Good save from Lynch. It was high. She pushed it up in the air. Will be a reward. Uh, 89 kilometers per hour. Kaya Van Marseka getting behind that drag flick. Speeds have been around the 70 and 80 mark throughout the tournament. Comes back, not a good trap. Van der Nassen releases it back to Zandervaard. And that went straight into Jody Kenny. She does well, spinned and delivered to. Well, it was looking to get it to Phoenix, but luring rather. Not too often you see this from the Dutch. Poor trap. But often you see uh, poor penalty corners ending up with a goal shot, which the Dutch managed to do. But fantastic defending by Australia. As indeed, as it's uh, carried forward again by Kitty Van Marler. She just ran over the side and a little grin from her as she realised she ran out of space. Bates, short pass infield to Malone. Kenny now. Maddie Fitzpatrick. Good pass to her sister. And now we see the Netherlands getting bodies behind the ball. Hertz just trying to deflect that ball in field. Five minutes gone in the second quarter, almost six. And still, the chances have been really limited. Surely we're not going to go to another shootout in the second semi-final. Ireland having been victorious over Spain in their semi-final match. Goal, what a goal! Well, it's just a wonderful strike. The ball laid back, and who's there but Kelly Yonker. Those are meet and greet to her. And finally, Alison Allen smiles. So Dahona just throws the ball over the top. Kate Hall, speed, down this right-hand side, gets her head up. And again, Yonker's movement in there is absolutely fantastic. Takes, plants it on the left foot. Two steps to the right, sweeps the ball home. Lynch has got no chance in goal. I think Alison Allen enjoyed that one. But that's great movement from Kelly Yonker. We saw it in one of the earlier games where, again, she was behind the defender, then just stepped in front, deflected it home. So that will ease the pressure a little bit on the Netherlands. So far in this tournament, they've yet to go behind in any game. I think the key to that movement is she stands in the defender's blind spot. Always, you know, it, we've said many times, it's not about making long lead. She just, she just stands in that blind spot on the left-hand side. Defender looks, thinks that's where she is, and before you know it, she's popped in front of you and put the ball in the back of the net. As we just see there, her fifth goal of the tournament. Is can Australia come back from this interesting stat today? With 75% of their goals have come in the second quarter, so if they were going to come back, this would be the one where they are most likely to score. Paul Godoy just looking on, and I'm sure he's wondering how they let that one slip. Really, just a moment of brilliance by Yonker. It was a bit, it was the burst of speed from Katel's on that right hand side. Suddenly there was just that little bit of space where she could accelerate into. And she knew Yonker would be there, that's why she played it. I mean, I was watching them train yesterday, and some of the movement they had and the fun they were having doing it was just remarkable. As Dirks van den Hervel picks up, looks to try and find Yonker again, intercepted well by Caitlin Nobbs.
Morgan now goes to the air, a rather flat aerial pass. It ricocheted up off the stick of Colin, but she managed to get it under control. Nuni. Did well, didn't panic when she was surrounded by Australian players. She's trying to put pressure on now. Stamm plays it forward. Van Heffen advances to the halfway line, plays it forward again. Good pass. Ketel's breaking forward. Lovely pass to pick out Lidavai Belton. On the reverse, off the glove it goes from Lynch and over the crossbar. But you can't give Lidavai Belton that much room at the top of the circle. Netherlands Van Heffen again, good work into the D, she goes deflected. So nearly on target. That was Federica Matler with the final touch. This is Velton's effort here. She's absolutely smashed that, I'm not going to lie. And penalty corner given against Australia. This has been a good spell of pressure by the Netherlands. Matler winning the penalty corner. Turnover ball there, and Matler uses her strength exceptionally well against Morgan. Knew straight away that she caused an infringement. Huge stick tackle. Potentially lucky not to be more because I think Matler was in on goal and Morgan was the last defender. The fourth penalty corner of the match now for the Netherlands. And Marseka moves to the second match again. And then Van der Nassim at the first. They go to Marseka. It's gone. Ketel's tried to just keep that one in. He's out for a long corner. Dirks van den Hervel, so much space, able to turn, fires it across. Kelly Yonker got a touch, but Australia scramble it clear. I'm trying to work out if well, I, th I think Holland have clearly up their intensity in the, the ball pace, but also Australia haven't quite found the rhythm that they found in that first quarter. Matler again. Draws the foul, played on quickly by Van Heffen. <laughs> And just too far of Dirks van den Hervel to keep it in play. Five minutes left in the second quarter. Can Australia find an equaliser before the half-time break? Brought down brilliantly by Ketels, who's having a storming game at the moment, involved in so much for the Netherlands. I just like the, the way that they, the interchange of the midfield, they obviously have a certain structure that they they play too, but there's so much freedom of movement and it's almost, well, you've come over into my space, so I need to go and find a, a, a space somewhere else on the field. And it's a nightmare to try and track all those runners. Ten circle penetrations to nil. That just shows how dominant they have been in this second quarter. The ball forward for Satri is just too far away. And the roll over the side. the 110th meeting between these two teams. Netherlands have won 56, Australia 36 and 17 draws. So they have tended to dominate against Australia. I have to say there was a period when Alison Annan was playing where it was the other way around. In the 90s when Australia were really strong. I think when you start a new cycle with players though, you know, new players come in, the form, not the form, but, but the history between the teams, it, it becomes an irrelevance. I think Kate Richards and Walsh and I were talking the other day, and she made the valid point on the shootout. All, it's all the youngsters coming in that tend to score because no one's seen them before. That's it, and the pressure mounts as people get to know your game. Of course, these two played in the final four years ago. Semi-final today. Who will be in the final again tomorrow? Nobbs watches that down from the air, trying to just push it forward. McMahon. And Assam and Lidavai Velton again, acres of space, closed down now by Kenny. It's to just cut back. McMahon managed to get her feet out of the way and just pushes the ball out over the side. Zandavad to Phoenix. 
Phoenix looking up, just coming infield again. Into the circle she goes, ball on her stick. Good tackle, though, coming from Rosie Malone. And now Smith has hardly had a touch, really, in this first half as Malone comes back again. Free hit goes Australia's way. I think a lot of the Australian forwards in this quarter have struggled for, for touches. Just trying to figure out how Velton managed to find herself in so much space on the edge of the Australian circle. Taylor, giving a tricky pass, but copes with it well with, oh, just as I said that, she pushed it out over the side. I think she'd done really well with Zandavard putting pressure on it. Because the Netherlands making Australia just do sort of shuttle runs across the pitch, which is really tiring. When you're craving a touch of the ball and all you're doing is running. Morgan won possession back. That was clever just pushing that onto the foot of Lauren Luring. Into the air though and just giving possession straight back to the Netherlands. Nassim to De Gerde. Belton steals it. Rosie Malone. Not worried. Number two, just be careful in there, please. OK, we want to keep you on the pitch. We want to keep you on the pitch, but you need to be careful. So Rosie Malone just being told, be careful with those challenges. They don't want to give her a card, but I think that means next time you will get a card. Sometimes the sticks lock together, don't they? It looks worse than it, than it is, but there also becomes a, a safety element of you know, stick, sticks landing on top of someone's head. But you can't get a clearer message than that. Marlene Dirks van den Hervel cuts in from the flank. Eva de Gerde inside the D. Lynch saves, went down really well. It looked as if de Gerde was going to add a second for the Netherlands, but Lynch to the rescue again. Burst of speed here by de Gerde. Look, into there, drags the ball around McMahon. Lynch does really well. And then it was van den Hervel coming in with the rebound. She didn't quite connect with. Rachel Lynch. Certainly does move off her line very fast. In the final 20 seconds of the first half. Looks as if Australia not going to call sorry, pull level before half time. Although maybe they're going to make me look a fool. And that's gone into the feet. It'll be a penalty corner. So they may well get the chance to pull level before half time. I love that actually, but long ball in. And there, I think it's uh, Van der Assem wasn't set as she tried to play the ball. Opportunity for Australia just before half time. I think it was definitely she was had to get across because Emily Smith was behind her, and then I think that just caught her in two minds. But now, great chance. All the Australian players are forward with just five seconds on the clock. Brooke Paris to inject. Jody Kenny waits at the top of the circle. So too, Regina Morgan. It's not a good injection. Comes to Kenny. Hoot has gone and lifted by Morgan. And that is the end of the action from the first half. And it was a shame for Australia because they had a guilt-edged opportunity to put the Netherlands under pressure and get an equaliser before the half-time break. But as it is, it is Netherlands one, Australia nil at half-time in this second semi-final. We'll go pitch side now to Krista Cullen. And I'm here with Jonka, the goal scorer. Is it, you did such a beautiful pop, it was a ball around the right and then a beautiful pop back. Is it moments of brilliance that you think will win this semi? Yeah, I think we have to be really patient. Australia is defending really well. Uh, so uh, we just have to keep the ball going and uh, just be patient and hopefully the next goal will come. And you've had a few opportunities as the Dutch in that cycle towards the end. Yeah, yeah, we did. We have to finish them now. It's, uh, you, don't have, you don't get a lot of the chances, so we have to finish them. Thanks so much. You're welcome.
Alison, it was a strong start by the Australians to get. Well, welcome back for the second half. The Netherlands have changed their goalkeeper. Josine Koning has gone under the bar for the second half. Alison Annan has been rotating her keepers. And the fans that have turned up here in the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre have had a really great day. Beautiful weather, wonderful hockey. And I think we're in for a very exciting second half because Australia are going to have to take it to the Netherlands if they want to play in the final tomorrow against Ireland. Rather appropriate song playing around the stadium. Take on me. That's what the Dutch were no doubt singing. Everybody's ready. Australia to get the second half underway. Players just looking at the umpires waiting for that whistle Emily Smith the captain of Australia she can lead them to the final it will be a special moment second half underway Australia straight away get the free hit down the line and Satu had just walked off the pitch Mel, can they come back? Yes, they can. They've got the quality to do it. But for me, listening to Alison Allen at, at that half-time interview with Krista Cullen, she clearly wasn't happy. She's not, you know, we didn't get the personality that we've had um, from her throughout this tournament. Felton again, sorry to interrupt. Went along the baseline, looked to lay it back. In the corner won by the Netherlands again. And the individual brilliance of Lidavai Velton. Nunink. Plays it into the D, had to get a stick on that, and desperately trying to clear. Velton wants it back, plays it into the D, appeals for a penalty corner. And the foot was just outside the D, according to Carolina De La Fuente. Velton moves it to the left. Lovely little pass, but that just caught the feet, and a little frustration. I think Cato's just banged that one towards goal. Kenny, we were just talking at half time, there's no doubt she is suffering with that shoulder because just not committing to some of the tackles the way we're used to seeing it. No, and it, it has to have had an impact and played a part. I think it's, a, it's absolutely fantastic that she's actually out here because the last time, I think yesterday when we were, or Thursday when we were here, it was in that sling and we were questioning whether she'd even play. Stolen by the Netherlands, Lidda by Belton on the reverse, Lynch again, well positioned, just pours it away. Turnover ball here from Kenny and Belton gets hold of it. I mean, 96.7 kilometers an hour. That's Lynch traveling. Made, it is, but Lynch made that look, got her angles right. Big left hand glove, but that is absolutely motoring from what 15, 16 meters. What power she got on that shot. Australia coming forward again. Can they create something? Hurts now. Trying to find a way around the back, forced towards the baseline. Managed to get the foul and a free hit from Van der Nassen. Harris lurking at the top of the circle. Another free hit to Australia. Looking to deflect that in was Kershaw, but went straight over the baseline. What Paul Godoyne said to his players at half time. We heard what Alison Annan had to say. 
quite a hard task, Master. She sets a standard that's very, very high. Yeah, but I think it also stems from, you know, she played her hockey under Rick Charlesworth, who also had exceptionally high standards, and she's got probably, arguably, the most, apart from coaching in India, I think she's probably got the most pressurised job in hockey because uh, Holland, sorry, are expected to win every tournament that they enter. And they've won the World Cup seven times, only once not played in a medal game, which is a pretty phenomenal record when you played all 14 World Cup tournaments and it came sixth in 1994. Not sure who the coach was then, whether he was ever heard of or she was ever heard of after that. And then Dirks van den Herbel just simply plays it in the foot, gets the free hit. And here come the Netherlands again. What a pass to Zandervaard. Lynch has had to come out, sweeps it clear. Good goalkeeping. Straight away, the free hit taken. Zandervaard looked to play that in early. It ricochets off Eddie Bone's stick, and it'll be a long corner. to Van Marsaka. Pressure from Australia, Malone now looking to close down and cut off that ball to the right-hand side. And Taylor sliding in, but now Cates has the ball, gets to the baseline, gets into the circle. Cates still going, but Kenny, good defence play. Renee Taylor's still down after that sliding tackle on the far side. Not looking overly promising at the moment. And here is the great pass to Zandavard that was read really well by Rachel Lynch, but Renee Taylor is in a lot of trouble. I don't think we're going to see her again in this game, which is a real blow to Australia. Yeah, be interesting to see, well, if we are able to find out what she's done. But as you say, judging by the facial expression as she's come off, not looking good. It looked fairly innocuous. She just sort of slid over the side, but must have got her arm or something stuck underneath her body. Morgan. Is it out wide now? And Paris with the chance to play it forward to Hertz. Hertz keeps it in play. No, she doesn't. Okay, again into. And here's Zandervaard one on one with Lynch. Lynch has gone to ground. Zandervaard looks to go over the top of her but puts it out of play. Good goalkeeping again from Rachel Lynch, but what space Zandervaard is getting. Well, that's two passes that have been played through. I think it's actually Kitty Van Marler here, but Lynch does really well, stays up, pushes Van Marler wide. Two really good opportunities. So nice on the wrist there for Renee Taylor, who's still Looks to be in quite a bit of distress. Maybe she's done ligament damage as Lidabai Belton turns and just lays it off the shot. And it's again Kitty Van Marler. And again, Rachel Lynch denies her. So again, Belton's causing havoc as well. Lifts the ball over McMahon's stick onto Van Marler's forehand. Lidabai Belton just is possessed by Brooke Ferris on the edge of the circle. We've just almost seen the Netherlands just flick a switch and raise the tempo of the game. But will they regret those opportunities they haven't been able to take? A good goal given by Lynch, but you just wonder they still keep Australia in the game. 2 0, it's a very different prospect. She's going to leave it behind for 
Brooke Paris. Netherlands still controlling the possession stats and the circle penetrations, but Australia still in it at 1 0. McMahon into the foot of Yonker, then accelerates, looks to feed it through. Savannah Fitzpatrick, edge of the circle, drilled it in, was looking for the deflection from Slattery. Hertz will pick up just inside the circle. Drives towards the baseline, looks to lay it back. Again, that was Grace Stewart there that time, just trying to get the deflection for Australia. Now I say the Dutch just out muscling the Australian forwards inside the circle. Yeah, I think Alice Nana made the point and that half-time chat, she wanted her team to be smart and be patient in the circle. And arguably that's also what you want from Australia because I don't think they're going to get many chances and when they do, they've really got to make them count. Eva de Gerde feeds it out to Van Mala. Van Mala ran the back, she went, Lynch kicks clear. Goes back into the circle, de Gerde faces Lynch, she blocks again. Australia trying to clear and eventually Georgina Morgan gets it clear. Stewart tried to play it down the line, it's gone over the side, she plays on now quickly. Good support coming down the right-hand side from Savannah Fitzpatrick. If Stewart could see her, she should have fed it through then, but she didn't look up. And the chance has gone. At least Australia are edging their way back into it. Yes, we can see from the commentary box potential passes and options. Here come the Netherlands once more. Lidavai Velten found some space on the right-hand side. She's closed down now, but into the circle she goes. Past Maddie Fitzpatrick. Lynch again comes to the rescue for the Hockey Roos. And Kershaw. Oh, dear. She got underneath that one. Velton driving in. And Lynch off with the pads. She's done very well actually coming off coming off her line when she's needed to to close down those angles. I'm pleased to say Lou Phoenix back on her feet, but she was absolutely clobbered by that ball. Anyway, it's a free hit to the Netherlands with just over five minutes left in the third quarter. Self-pass by De Gerda. Herbal couldn't get on the end of that, so Kershaw picks it up defensively for Australia. Just lost a split second by Nobbs. Free hit now again to the Netherlands. Must travel five metres before it can go in the deep. Coming looks Van den Herpen, and a lovely little jump from De Herder. She lifts that dangerously high into a crowded circle. So, lovely bit of skill there, and then execution of the, of the reverse stick cross. Certainly not what she would have hoped for, but again, you can just sense the, the Dutch building a little bit more momentum as we go into the final five minutes of this quarter. Harris seems to just drop back into that almost right back position. Good work by Rosie Malone, manages to get away from Zandavar and also gets the pass out onto the right hand side. Slattery was there, and it's a long corner to Australia. Kate and Nobbs. Australia searching for an equaliser. The Netherlands have squandered a few opportunities or been denied by brilliant goalkeeping by Rachel Lynch. Free hit to a stress. Stephanie Kershaw plays on quickly into the circle, goes past one, shoots, and a sharp save from Koning. I think Kershaw has been brilliant for Australia through this tournament. Really looks a lively prospect from that midfield. Burst the line, happy to take the free hits quickly. Well, she has, and when you think she missed the whole year in 2016 with an ACL injury, it's good to see her back out there. <laughs> Slattery penalised. So now the Netherlands get the chance to just control things again. 89 kilometres per hour, that shot from Kershaw. Certainly some pace on it. Reaction time for the goalkeepers, does it? Ball's being hit at 89, 95 mile, uh, kilometers an hour. No. Actually, appreciate the job they do. Australia, though, coming into this, and it will come to Slattery now. 
Slattery gets the free hit of Arjen van der Nassa. Slattery driving towards the baseline, just showed too much of the ball, stolen back, but she's fought back to get it and won a penalty corner. That was sheer determination from Catherine Slattery. Certainly determined from Slattery, picks the ball up very wide, steals it back of Van, of Van der Nassum, and there, sticks get caught with Stam. Certainly determined what we're used to seeing from Catherine Slattery. Can Australia get a goal now? That would give us a really big final quarter. Jody Kenny waits at the first battery, Maddie Fitzpatrick at the second. Good stop, Kenny slaps it, deflected off Margot van Geffen's stick, and it will be a long corner to Australia. Lifted out wide, Nobbs pulled it down, watched it all the way onto her stick. Now Rosie Malone, always lively, and this is around the defence, and it came up off the Netherlands sticks. So it's another free hit to Australia, Nobbs. Gets it from Malone, goes back to Bone. Looking to switch the play. Kenny now in the heart of the defence again. Goes then on to the right-hand side. Lovely little knock forward by Maddie Fitzpatrick. Slattery again trying to weave her way into the deep. Netherlands, though, play it into their own player's foot. Played on again by Maddie Fitzpatrick. Edge of the D, Emily Smith. Can she do anything? Emily Smith, then clever little pass round her back, but... Stolen away by the Netherlands. Good defensive play from Laura Nunning. Van Heffen, what a switch of play that would have been. Fortunately, it's gone Australia's way, and that's Brooke Perris bursting forward. Brooke Perris into the D she goes, gets the shot away. Took a slight deflection on the way through, so it will be another long corner to Australia. Good spell of pressure from them, how they would love a goal before the final break. Hurts now. Hurts again, who had three years out of the national team and concentrated on a career as a nurse. And was top scorer in the Australian Hockey League last year. Which earned a recall to the Hockey Roos squad. So they're inching back in the possession stats, but where it matters, the goal-scoring stats, they're not at the moment. And Velton again accelerated onto the ball. She gets it across. That's a great block by Hedy Bone. Had to be made because Yonker was lurking at the back post. Now there's a chance for a counter-attack for Australia. But just showing too much of the ball there was Emily Hertz. And the Netherlands have got it back. And Velton faced with Maddie Fitzpatrick. Making a dance, a merry song out there. Sure, we'll get to see that and last chance again. But for me, Edwina Bone, her positioning was exceptional. Not just because she got herself on the line of the pass, but she didn't then she didn't then close down Velton. She she made Velton make the decision. She put herself in the perfect line and got a big fat stick on it. Well, I'm pleased to say Renee Taylor is back out there. So whatever she did to her wrist, the ice pack seemed to have calmed it down. Be a bit of good news for Australia. Peter's gone though, and that is the end of the third quarter. Alison Annan already out there, ready to give her instructions to her players, and they're in quickly. Certainly, Australia looking a little bit slower to get to the team huddle. Score at the final break is the Netherlands one, Australia nil in this second semi final. Alison Anna giving her team the last instructions. This was a good steal by the Netherlands from Kenny, and it was brilliant work again from Rachel Lynch. Well placed, and a sharp save from Lidavai Velton. Yeah, Velton's been causing problems all game as well. Not just this game, for the whole tournament. Again, spins here, then little lift over to Van Marla to unleash a forehand shot. And then, once again, there she is driving around the right-hand side. Lynch off the line to save with the pad. Uh, 
Rachel Lynch has really kept her team in this match as we're going to go pitch side now to Krista Cullen. So, Paul, you've been under pressure a fair amount in that last third. Rachel Lynch pulling off four big saves. You must be proud of her staying in it. Yeah, she's playing well. We've had a couple of chances ourselves, so it's only 1-0. We'll see what happens. And you've got 15 minutes to put it right. What are you told the girls? Just go for it. You know, they've got to, they've got to play aggressively, commit to, the, to what we're doing. Perfect. Thanks so much. Thanks. Well, the crowd are having a great time here at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. At the moment, it's the Netherlands singing the songs down on the pitch. Can Australia find their voice in this final quarter? More importantly, they need to find a goal. The whistle goes, Emily Smith pushes forward, feeds it out down to Malone. Time is the enemy of Australia now. They need to get a goal. Good pressure, though, and force them. Maybe a long corner. No, it was kept in play by Colin. Nobbs comes all the way back. Oh, the ball from the side. McMahon. Comes down by Phoenix. Back to Nobbs. And again, Zandavard putting on good pressure. Now Jonker will look to close down on the far side. Pushed forward but given away. And Vanassen steals it away. I think you I think you always get to this, this particular stage of a game and for all the possession that Australia have had and the half chances that they've been given, where do you see the goal coming from? You know, I think their corners haven't been great so far. Margot van Keffen's done exceptionally well um, with her number one running. She's probably got to two or three of the, of the four or five that Australia have had. So where is the goal going to come from, from an Australia perspective? Well, maybe a bit of slattery magic as she gets the ball now. Got the... Well, oh, it's come off her foot. No complaints from her. There's a little bit of a sigh from the players around her. going to see the Netherlands just try and slow things down or will they go for more? I think they'll go for more. Well, I think there comes a point, doesn't there, where Australia know they've got to push up and try and get this equaliser and that is going to leave spaces without a doubt for, for Holland to expose. A little pass from Zandavard, she gets the ball back, lays it into the D and again it's Lynch who kicks it away but Kenny kept it in play rather dangerously. And the Netherlands have won another long corner. Good block from Slattery, another long corner, Eva de Herder over the ball for the Netherlands. Comes back to Sarah Colin. Almost stolen and kept in play by Kershaw, but Phoenix played on and Kershaw hadn't retired the five metres. And Marsecker. Again, the Netherlands just looking to use the width. Gertz van den Hervel. Strength shown by her to the baseline. She goes, keeps it. Well, thought she kept it in plan. It just tipped her foot. And it's a rare thing. She's not got the headband on now. Commentator's nightmare, that isn't it? I'm just thinking, I can't remember the last time I saw a play without one, or if I ever have. I did ask her if she was able to get a sponsorship deal out of it, and she said no, she wasn't. So, Kershaw plays on that, looks to burst through the midfield for Australia, holds the ball up, and then cleverly played it into the foot. She's collided into the D, but disappointing as Hertz couldn't. The pass is going to be a long corner. Kershaw, though, is okay now. I didn't see anything wrong. Emily Smith was asking why they didn't get a free hit. And I said, didn't see anything wrong. Uh, it's not going to be a free hit there, it's actually a long corner opposite where umpire Sarah Wilson is standing. Missy Bates 
And in Malone on the deck. Malone back on her feet, fighting for the ball. Kitty Van Marler dribbles it out, though. Great run up the middle from Luring, if she can find it. Van Marler burst between two Australian players. Van Marler into the deep, look to find Luring, and it hits the foot of Georgina Morgan, and she gets a penalty corner. But what a run from Kitty Van Marler. That's absolutely ridiculous. Van Marler's got the ball on the end of her stick, and the Australian players can't keep up with her. Fantastic play. What, 40, 50 metres, she's run with the ball, puts it onto Georgia Morgan's foot. Now the chance for the Netherlands to stretch their lead. But they've got to get past Rachel Lynch. Kaya van Marseke at the first battery, and again van der Nassum at the second. They go with Van Marseke, and another sharp save from Lynch, and the ball goes over the safety net into the crowd. Well held, that man. Netherlands have taken the long corner quickly. Eddie Bone deflects it away from Velton and over the baseline, another long corner. This is more like the Dutch routine. Lovely trap, arguably down the middle. But Lynch has still got to make the save. You just feel the job Rachel Lynch has done. A team over a goal and the chance to go into a shootout. Bates plays it up the side, but too narrow, it rolls out of play. Ball back with the Netherlands now as the substitutes all change places. Just over 10 minutes left in this semi final. Can Australia find an equaliser? Or are the Netherlands going to book themselves yet another place? In the gold medal match, Lidemai Velton plays it forward. It's intercepted well by Jody Kenny. Morgan gives it back to her, stolen away rather easily by Velton. Velton into the D, she goes, accelerates toward Lynch. Another brilliant save, rebound comes back, Lynch saves again. And Lynch denying, I think it was Cathals with the second attempt. I think your vitality player of the match, I would think, would be fairly easy, Mel, certainly from where I'm standing. Where do you live, Ashley? I live in Australia, but I just think that <laughs> no, she has Rachel been. Lynch has no, been outstanding. Has been. No, without, without a doubt, I think, you know, you always look forward to playing against the Dutchman, I think, when you're a goalkeeper. She's made a great save there with the stick, and then she's got up to clear the ball from Kato, so, yeah, definitely. She's a, a contender. contender. I'm going to give you that. She's a contender. Well, when you look at how rampant the Dutch have been, Australia have really made them work in this game as Slattery looks to base race forward. Good defensive player coming from Stamp. We're almost at the halfway stage of the final quarter. Kulo said, where is the goal going to come from if Australia are going to get it? Slattery stolen it into the D she goes. Dispossessed, though, by Van Heffen. A lovely tackle from her. And now De Gerda shows a little bit of wizardry with her stick and then smashes it forward. And Matla is clean through. Morgan's coming back. Matla is a little bit casual. Morgan tries to get a poke. And Matla is penalised for shoving Georgina Morgan. She can't believe it. Kershaw now, and not surprisingly, Phoenix going in hard in the challenge, and the umpire's trying to calm things down. So there, it's an obstruction. Uh, Matler's played Georgia Morgan without having a stick on the ball. Definitely can't do that. And the umpire had it absolutely right. gone past the halfway stage Australia still chasing a goal to give them a chance in a shootout Kershaw again looks to break forward finds Grace Stewart Stewart has hurts ahead of her Stewart still inside the deep and it hits a foot she impound the foot of Sana Colon and Australia have another penalty corner can they turn this one into a goal ball down the middle lovely little skills by Grace Stewart 
And it ends up being Curlin actually plays the ball onto her stick, onto her foot, sorry. So she did make a good tackle, clean tackle, but she put it onto her own foot. For some of the Australian fans, it's all too close to watch. So Morgan waits. Eddie Bone is alongside her. Comes to Georgia Morgan, she scores! Australia are level! Georgina Morgan has pulled them level and Paul Godoyne is pumped on the side. Well, they've gone with Kenny, they went with Morgan and now Australia are level. This is Georgia Morgan's favourite side without a doubt. You can see it just bow as it comes in. Connie's got no chance in goal. Low, lifted. Fantastic goal for Australia, and we asked the question where it's going to come from, and Georgia Morgan's just answered it for us. She has indeed, and she's been out for so long with injury. That goal will mean so much to her, and it may be one of the most important goals she'll score in her career. If this goes to a shootout and Australia managed to hang on or even get a victory in the shootout. Wow, 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 we are now in for a big finish. Green Boat gets the free hit, Kershaw leaves it behind. And as wonderful as the Dutch are, you just wonder how fragile they are in shootouts these days. Yeah, and you, yes, there's you know, six and a half minutes left to go, but the game that Rachel Lynch has had so far, they're probably asking where they're go how they're going to get past Well, Australia look as if they want to finish it in normal time, the way they're attacked, and the ball comes out to Bates. She loses out, though, and now the Netherlands get the chance to attack. Jonka, though, just lost the ball. Bates came back and stole it off her. It's given away cheaply, though, by Morgan. Kitty Van Marla looked to play it first time. Morgan came back and prevented the ball getting to Jonka. Helter skelter stuff here. This is what we all hoped for from the word go, wasn't it? It was indeed. The Netherlands again using the width of the pitch well. Zander Vard will come up with the ball, drills that one towards goal. Lady Bone is there. And then swept towards the side by Carrie McMahon. The Netherlands, though. Still managed to get possession, stolen away by Kenny. Slattery stopped. Dirk Van den Herbel slides the ball towards the near post. Nobody there for the Netherlands. Well, Alison Anna now not looking too pleased and probably a little bit nervous. I did ask whether those missed opportunities or the great saves from Lynch, they were going to rue those. We've still got five minutes to see if that is the case. I think then if it does, if it goes to the shootout, and it is a big if with five minutes left with these two teams playing, Rachel Lynch is in the game. She's made loads of saves. She potentially will be the one confident going into that. Oh, Emily Smith, she's drilled that straight to Lidemai Velton, who breaks forward. Chased now by Bates, George Eno Morgan was there and Smith is back on the baseline to try and retrieve the ball for Australia. Even away though by Savannah Fitzpatrick. Slattery now fighting for the ball, Dirks van den Herbel wins it back, gives it to De Gerda who looked up. Catles held her stick up in the air saying, this is where I was. De Gerdo took a year out from hockey after the Rio Olympics to recharge, not just physically, but also mentally. Goes forward to Slattery now, good run forward from Maddie Fitzpatrick. And that's gone into the foot, Maddie Fitzpatrick plays on quickly. And then Van den Assen just deflected it over the base, a long corner. Kuda again steals at the edge of the deep. Smith, though, had a stick low down. It's an Australian free hit. Three and a half minutes left. Can they steal this right at the death and get a victory? 
It's only the third goal the Netherlands have conceded in this tournament. Well, they've not been put under this much pressure either, have they, throughout the tournament? And the way Australia are playing this last three minutes, they sense they've got a chance and an opportunity to win it in regulation time. Long ball forward will go to nobody for the Netherlands. Well, it took a touch, has it? No, no, they're just pushing up now. With a high press to restrict Australia coming out. Morgan goes to the air, throws it. Oh, Dirks van den Herbel. Oh, she should have been at Wimbledon with a smash like that. Margot van Heffen trying to get away from Slattery. Slattery just holding her ground. Two and a half minutes left now. And it's gone off the stick of Van Heffen out of play. Kershaw looks to play on quickly. Questions whether Van Heffen was the five metres. I don't think she was. Hence the free hit to Kershaw. And again, just her run being blocked. Comes back to Perris. Perris to Kershaw. Kershaw, top of the circle. Tries to dink it in. She's inside the circle. Tries to get the shot away. Not able to. And it catches her foot. Tell you what, it's a fantastic piece of defending by Van den Assen there. Full length dive, look at that. That's what it means to try and stop Kershaw from scoring. Morgan let that one hit her body. She probably was wise to do so because Kitty Van Marler was on the overlap. Now here comes Margot Van Keffen to the baseline. Look to just play the short pass in. Strong tackling coming from Kenny. Velton went into it. Velton very upset they didn't get the free hit. Brought down well by Eddie Bone, fired forward, looking for Rosie Malone, it hit her foot. De Herder looks up, smashes it forward. It was again a really good block just in front of her from Savannah Fitzpatrick. Van Marler prevented from going anywhere by Steph Kershaw. Stam, we're about to enter the final minute. It looks as if we're headed for yet another shootout. Australia with a late goal. Good block from Fitzpatrick. Equally good block from Van den Assen, although she's conceded the free hit. Anderson Annan, not happy at all. She will not want to be beaten by the team. She served so well. Hertz carries forward again for Astray. Goes past one. Gets the free hit. 30 seconds left, surely. We've seen some late goals in this tournament. Is there another one to come now? Into the D it goes, cut out by De Gerde. She finds Lida by Velton. Velton will accelerate. Kenny is inside her. Kenny runs with Lida by Velton. Kitty Van Marler's in front of the goal. She got underneath it and has lifted it into the crowd. Well, you would have bet your house on Lida by Velton finding Kitty Van Marler. We are headed into another shootout. Would you believe it? Lida by Velton, frustrated. She had a chance then to set up a real late winner for the Netherlands, but just got underneath the ball. And Rachel Lynch, well, she certainly did keep her team in this match. And now she's going to have to try and do it all for them in the shootout. Final score at full time is Netherlands 1, Australia 1, with a shootout to follow.
certainly is, Chris, as Federica Matla walks through, forward to face Rachel Lynch. It is five, the best of five first. If we're level at the best of five, it goes to sudden death, and you change the order of the players if you want, but it will still be the same five players. Eight seconds in which to beat Lynch from the 22-meter line. Matler goes off to the left-hand side, goes on the reverse and fires it home. Lynch given no chance whatsoever with that one. Well, there's a player that wasn't in Rio, so has no mental scars from that at all. Little shuffle in front of Lynch, puts it onto that reverse stick side and clinical finish, exactly what the Dutch would have wanted. So now Australia to full level. Chrissy Bates, who looked so confident in their last shootout against Argentina. Can she do it again? Whistle goes, she goes off out to the right, then straightens. Koenig's come a long way, and underneath the keeper it goes from Chrissy Bates. She jumps in the air in ecstasy. It's one apiece. Lovely composure from Bates there. Koenig comes out changes the, the speed at which she does things, but kept it flat on the floor. Lovely finish. So now with the headband back on around her head, Carleen Dirks van den Hervel, the captain of the Netherlands, waits for the whistle. It goes, she looks up, goes straight down. Now veers off to the left-hand side. Lynch has come, Lynch has blocked. We're still one apiece, but Rachel Lynch has had the first victory for Australia. Up, up to the penalty spot. For me, I don't think Van den Hovel did enough in that situation. Just kept going on to that reverse stick side. And now it is Brooke Perris who scored the deciding goal in the shootout against Argentina. It's too much to watch for some. Perris goes straight down the line, looks to take it early, and a sharp save from Koenig. No goal this time for Brooke Perris. We're still tied up at one all. Can't blame her for trying something different, having taken one against Argentina the other night. Just... Yeah. Tunnel visioned, I think, knew exactly what was coming. There wasn't any kind of distract... Uh, faking at the top. So now it is Margot van Heffen to face Rachel Lynch. Again, she advances, looks to shape a shot from the top of the D. Shapes on the backhand again, into the pads of Lynch, still alive for van Heffen. Lynch gets a touch and van Heffen falls over the keeper. But Lynch has done it again for Australia. A second miss for the Dutch. Two or three times, van Heffen puts the ball onto that reverse side breaks the dummy, but it doesn't do anything. Rachel Lynch is just watching the ball, not the stick or the... Caitlin Nobbs didn't participate in the shootout for Australia last time out. She is going to this time. Accelerates quickly into the circle, reverses to the keeper, looks to spin, and it's a save again from Koenig. Anything you can do, Rachel Lynch, I can do better, says Josine Koenig. Nobbs definitely does the right thing, which is just didn't, as in getting the ball into the hook of the stick, but she just doesn't drag it far enough around Koenig. So, Jean Devard now to face Rachel Lynch. Lynch in a sprinting position behind a goal, advances up to the penalty spot. Devard goes to the left hand side, she's done it, and that will be 2 1 to the Netherlands. Jean Devard pulled Lynch one way, saw her go to ground, and then just pushed the ball harmlessly into the goal. Sense the relief there from Zandavard. I think Rachel Lynch knew she'd got her because she saw a hand go into the back of the Vard. Oh, the Dutch celebrating as now Carrie McMahon for Australia. Heads off slightly to the right, look to take it early. She's got Josephine Koning on the ground. Koning gets a touch, has to shoot, it's gone wide. So the Dutch now are leading 2-1. If they score this one, they are going to be through to the final. The one person you'd want on your fifth corner to put you through to the final in the way that she's played is Ledevine Velsen. 
So a lid of eye, Velton. Regarded by many as the best in the world at the moment to face Rachel Lynch. Velton almost lost control of it. Goes off to the right hand side, pushes it under. The Netherlands are in the final. Rachel Lynch is beaten. The Dutch players run to engulf Lidovi Velten. They did it the hard way, but their fans can breathe a sigh of relief. They are through to the final in 2018, where they will meet Ireland. But they had to do it the hard way against a resolute Australia. Rachel Lynch, what a hero in the game, but she couldn't quite do it in the shootout. And the Netherlands celebrate as one. I'm sure they are extremely relieved. Eva de Gerde just putting her tongue out as if to say, wow, we made that hard. Oh, I mean, like I said, the one person you wanted to take that would be Velton in that situation. And you could just sense the relief from her and the rest of the team that they've managed to win that game. Is it Rachel Lynch? I do feel sorry for. I think she was outstanding during this game. But look at that. You can just sense the emotion because they were run close. But cutting in goal for, for uh, Holland to save three of, uh, in the shootout. Your vitality player in the match, though, Mel? Uh, I, I think Belton's been outstanding, but I'm going to give it to Rachel Lynch. I think she is the reason that Australia went through to that shootout. Well, I agree. Australia are going to have to pick themselves up. They'll be back for the bronze medal match. They fought valiantly here against the Dutch. It is the Netherlands one, Australia one, but the Netherlands win 3-1 in the shootout. So this is how it'll look tomorrow. We've had Ireland and Spain, Ireland victorious in the shootout. Netherlands drew with Australia. They were victorious in the shootout. So Australia will play Spain in the bronze medal match. And then the gold medal match will be the Netherlands versus Ireland for a chance to be crowned champions of the world. We're going to go pitch side now because Krista Cullen has one of the victorious Dutch. I do, Belton, congratulations. It was hard work out there. You guys nearly ran away with it in the first half, but the Aussies came back. Yeah, uh, I think this is how a semi-final should be. Uh, we started off really good, but uh, yeah, in the second half, we give them the feeling that there was something to get, and uh, the Aussies did that really good. And then you went into a shootout. It could have gone either way. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> I was really nervous, but uh, yeah, our goalie did really good, and our, uh, the, the one who took uh, the shootout did really pretty well as well. And the number of opportunities you had, you know, they were uh, you were up in their attacking circle a lot. You weren't able to capitalise. Uh, yeah, and my compliments to the goalkeeper. She did really, really well today. Uh, we had enough chances, but we didn't finish them. Uh, they did the chance they had. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy we won the shootout. Congratulations, and we'll see you in the final. Well done. Thank you.